Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Still waiting, still waiting, still waiting, mm-hmm. and we're live. We are rolling. <clears throat> we're not really live because no one listens to this live, but that'd be fun someday if we Wouldn't could do a be? live podcast. Oh, we could have callers? With, yeah. Caller. Her. One. Oh. <laughs> singular. We could take one call. One call. Nate, who's on the line? <laughs> um, do you want to call it out? What? We have, oh, kind of, yeah. we have kind of matching outfits today. Yeah, we we're didn't really proud that. of ourselves. I know. I actually changed for the first time ever for a podcast. Instead of rolling right in from your training gear. That's right. Yeah. So I have clean shorts, clean shirt, not a clean headband, and I have different shoes on. For those of you watching, these are the uh, kind of the relaxed weekend wear Vivo mm. Barefoots. They're very nice. Nice. Yes. I remember the first time I put these on and my brother said to me, <laughs> cool clown shoes. Um, and I kind of was like, I have a little, I have a thin skin, so to speak. And I was like, oh, maybe I won't wear these, you know? Like, I kind of put them away for a little while. I'm like, dude, that's what we're after. We need the clown shoes. They're not clown shoes. It's just, he was referencing the fact that there's a wide, very wide toe box on these shoes, which looks unusual to people when they look down. They're like, oh, that looks kind of, you know, like the characteristic large wide clown feet you know who doesn't have issues with bunions clowns 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 don't have bunions because they got plenty of room in their shoes to wiggle around so anyway if you've got a bunion out there if you're working on a bunion get the hell out of whatever shoes you're wearing it's just that is what's causing this problem for you so go with a wide toe box get yourself some vivo barefoots or start walking around barefoot or just stop with the narrow shoes I don't even really know what a bunion is. I've never had that issue. Yeah. Yeah. Google Because I wear the clown shoes. Google image. <laughs> Google image it. Okay. <clears throat> you get a wiki, oh, wiki med, med wiki. What's yeah. it? WebMD? Yeah. Yeah. Wiki feet. Wiki feet. <laughs> okay. That's enough banter. Okay. Is that good? Great. Yeah. And we're into this topic. And we are going to start with, because today is a pretty special day in the company. Launch days are always big. And I thought, you know, we should talk about what goes in from start to finish. We might kind of skip over a couple parts because this could be like a four-hour episode. I know. What goes into building a new product, specifically an ebook for functional bodybuilding? And today we launched Pump 40. And Aerobic 40. And Aerobic 40, which is essentially... Part two of the very famous and well-received aerobic bodybuilder. It is <clears throat> lifting workouts, pump 40, all lifting, aerobic 40, all cardio, progressive, eight weeks. You can get <clears throat> the combo and call it aerobic bodybuilder 2.0. You can buy each one separately. There's a pretty substantial uh, incentive to get both. You get a pretty pretty good discount Sweet on the deal. second. Sweet deal. And uh, those are live right now on the website, right? Or <laughs> They are, no. Functional-bodybuilding.com. They are live on the website. I mean, by the time people hear it, let's talk about, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll start at the end and we'll work backwards, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what happened this morning, Satya? Uh, this morning, well, one thing you didn't mention is that we have this training subscription program, Persist, and we work super hard to make that the most valuable fitness program you could purchase and yeah. I mean it is pretty sweet talk about sweet deals so we just pack a lot of value into that subscription program so as a member benefit we decided to make these ebooks complimentary to our persist subscribers in case they need a 40 minute quick option in addition to what they're doing in the training program already yep and so we sent the link out this morning to our many subscribers and they crashed the website. <laughs> <laughs> it's the subscribers' fault. It's your fault, guys. <laughs> too we excited lo- we, to get the everyone's program. Everyone's <laughs> too excited to get their hands on that pump forty. Yeah. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm thrilled that everybody had a chance to grab it, and uh, that we solved mostly all the issues that were going on with the. Uh, Website traffic overload. Working on it. I mean, I may literally get a call any second from my guy. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we're we're adding some like souped up features to the website to handle all the traffic. Nice. Yeah. 
souped up website features. Yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah. Things that you cannot see, they're just No, they're features. invisible to you. Invisible features. Yeah. That's like when you get a new roof at your house and yeah. you're just like, oh, like my house looks exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same. <laughs> and it was really expensive. But hey, next time it rains, maybe I won't get a leak. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, maybe you weren't even having leaks and yeah. you just had to do it because it was time or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you'll just be able to get your ebook. <laughs> maybe you'll just get your ebook. <laughs> no, wonder why. Okay. So that's what happened this morning. And then let's rewind and tell me in your, in your, from your lens, when was the first whisper of this pump 40 concept? I mean, this is obviously before we had a name to it, but like, where did, where did it originate in your mind? Yeah, that's a great question because it's... I have good questions. Okay. I'm a good interviewer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but could you middle at a table? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, separate topic. All right, it's interesting to me how these things actually evolve in functional bodybuilding because to me, there wasn't one moment that stood out like, oh, we're doing this thing. It's... It, it's always an evolution that starts from what you're engaged in in your own training, the types of questions that we're hearing from people, the types of things that are happening in the functional bodybuilding world. Mm -hmm. So from my lens, I believe the first glimmer of Pump 40 came around <clears throat> when Cliff, our operations director, hmm. was doing the Persist Pump track and is very enthusiastic about it. And he mentioned, hey, you know, I just am super short on time because I'm working so hard for you guys and you guys yeah. keep cracking the whip <laughs> and I don't even do the conditioning. I just do the pump and I lift and I get on with my day and it's amazing. And I think that was the first moment where I thought, huh, oh, this is going to be, this hmm. might be a thing. That's funny. I was going to say something similar. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to reference the old, uh, you know, head of ops, Cliff, um, Shout out to Cliff. Thank you for uh, all the hard work you do and um, for sacrificing your conditioning for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's also got, you know, like two kids and like a family. He's, yeah. he's got a lot of other he's things going guy. on. Yeah, he's a busy guy. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, but also, you know, it's interesting because there was sort of um, the evolution of a lot of, like, the, I also spent some time going back and, and thinking about programs that we had launched many, many, you know, years ago. Yeah. And aerobic bodybuilder is one that I often come back to. It was something that was modeled after a period of time in my training that I was basically splitting my, I was doing a true split where it was like mornings I did cardio and evenings or late afternoon or afternoons I did weight training. Um, and wrote that ebook with like functional bodybuilding principles in the weight training section. So it would be like part, part one was cardio FBB style. Mm -hmm. Part two was weight training FBB style. And, um, <clears throat> there were days, uh, where I was feeling like, you know, I'm not feeling, I'm not, I'm just not feeling up for the additional bout of conditioning after my weight training. And, um, anyhow, so those were like entering my thoughts as well. And it's funny. It's like when I was younger, I would go to the gym and just hammer weights. Like mm -hmm. I did <clears throat> German body composition training. Yep. I did German volume training. These were Polican pro uh, programs that I followed for several years in college and then, you know, those were like four day a week training plans. And then two days a week, I would go to the track with my buddy and we would do sprint workouts. And we always trained with a lot of intensity and it was like 45 to 60 minutes of lifting. And then, the, you know, the obligatory chit chat. Um, but like the concept of like doing strength and like a conditioning workout all in the same thing, that really only entered into the equation with CrossFit, for me at least. <clears throat> um, it was always separate. And then of course there were like true CrossFit Metcons where it was like you're doing strength work and conditioning all together, which was, 
you know, still to, to this day, one of the most impactful things I've learned in fitness. So that became part of the culture of like training, at least in the community I was in, which was CrossFit. And then even past the CrossFit community and the competitive CrossFit community into functional bodybuilding, there was a lot of people that wanted to do that too. Mm -hmm. They were like, how do I get a little bit of all of this? And, um, but there's there's still a place for segmentation of training for coming in and weight training really hard and that like idea that people are like I'm saving myself for the conditioning at the end it's like well if you're saving yourself for the conditioning then you're not putting in the intensity that's required in this weight training stuff to see huge benefit mm -hmm. and when I was competing and when many of us were competing we were just going so hard in everything that we did and just m like crushing you know efforts on and volume and it was just like everything was getting like the heaviest hardest dose and <clears throat> that's just not the reality for how most people approach the gym it's like come to the gym and i really want to like i, I want to bring you got to where are you going to choose like where are you going to bring your intensity You're right you know and because the conditioning workouts that combine cardio and strength like they have such a potent impact on people's physiology it tends to be where people want to like push the effort but with the introduction of functional body composition that was like one of our first ebooks that was mainly focused around hypertrophy training and then the pump track in persist which is the evolution of functional body composition mm -hmm. it became clear that people were like i love just i love the weight training aspect of this yeah it's it's the weight training i always thought i wanted to do in the gym but it's allowing me to go hard and keep my body healthy because it focuses on quality movement. There's tempo prescriptions in there to keep people working at high effort, but not maxing out and getting into bad positions with weights. There's strength balance principles in there. So we're doing sort of the bulletproofing, the, you know, the accessory work that keeps the body healthy. And those pe people are loving that. Yeah. And, you know, with Cliff saying, you know, and, and with this like thing where it's now becoming more of an expectation, it's like, I need to, I, I'm, I'm expecting to be like, not only just working out for an hour, but done and out of the mm -hmm. gym and home, like, like, you know, six, in the next thing, I'm into the next thing. Yeah. And while I wish our culture was set up around, like people plan to move for two hours, three hours a day, not in the gym necessarily, but like, I wish the culture was like, yeah, today we're going to get out for a walk for 45 minutes. We're going to go to the gym for 45 minutes. We're going to go ride a bike with our kids for, you know, 45. Like there's just more movement. Um, that's just not the culture that many people are in. And yeah. they have that precious hour and we got to make it really, really the best thing that they can get. And the best thing you can get is not always packing a ton of stuff into an hour because then you just drop the intensity on everything. You know, if you, if you want to do an hour's worth of movement, you can't push really hard in, in any one thing. Otherwise you'll have to take long breaks and it'll go over an hour. So anyhow, those were some of the other things that kind of led me to thinking about, you know, how, how does this look and what does it feel like to do this? And so I started to really invest time and energy myself to, to, to explore Okay, if I just have basically 30 minutes of weight training and 10 minutes of prep to do, how what what's that going to feel like? How hard am I going to go? Like, this is my workout right here. This is all I got, and I'm out the door. There's no conditioning to, like, add a little extra zing to my workout. Mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty impactful. Like, I've been pushing my strength training, my, my hypertrophy work way way harder than I have in, in quite some time. Yeah. So how do you make the decision to actually put something like that into a program? Well, I first, I first like start to, well, first there has to be enough creative space in my brain to even address it. So, you know, if I, I'm starting to explore some stuff in the gym myself, maybe with a couple clients, um, and I'm starting to feel like, well, there's maybe something here, but I've got so many things going on day to day, week after week that I can't like, I don't have like three full days just like 
off, you know, cleared on my calendar to just sit down and really like put some thought to this and start to see what materializes on paper. So first it's like, I got to get my schedule cleared. How do I get ahead on what we're doing? How do I make room for this? Like, okay, if I get all my obligations done now, like this week, then that means I have, oh, next week could be free and I could really think about this a lot more. <clears throat> so that's the first step. And then it's just like starting to put the pen to paper, so to speak. You know, we write pro programs in a, an application called True Coach. So I'm in True Coach, writing down <clears throat> different training formats. I got to get like two, three, four weeks worth of, you know, progressions in my mind on onto the computer screen. And then I'm going to go and test them. And then I'm going to have somebody else test them like Cliff in this example. You know, Cliff is already in week five or six of this. We started writing this maybe over a month and a half ago. <clears throat> and the ideas were coming two, three, four months ago. So that's kind of the, the that's how it gets started for me. Yeah. Yeah. And then at some point we're having a conversation too. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the most important conversations that we had in this whole process. Cause I remember it was just like, <clears throat> I was, you know, in the early days of our company, you know, nothing happened without us basically sitting down and just sort of you're, you were like, you would do sort of an interview of me and be like, well, what's this about? What are we trying to accomplish? And then at some point in the conversation, it would click for you and you'd be like, okay, I could totally see how this, how we message this and how this makes sense and how it's uh, answering a problem that somebody's having out there, mm -hmm. our customers and, and the, our audience. Um, that's how it worked with <clears throat> ATS, functional body composition and all the things that came after it. And we hadn't really had that conversation. We had just been having like, uh, I feel like there's this thing that's going on that we need to answer and it was like we would talk about it and they're like ah but we got all this other stuff going on like we're so busy and i i couldn't gain personal momentum until that conversation happened it was like a wednesday afternoon and you were like okay tell me what you're thinking about this thing because i had said in a meeting with with i think you me and cliff i was like i want to launch this thing like next month and you're like i'm like i don't know if you know, I forget. It was like I was like I want to do this thing. What's it gonna? What's gonna? How? What's it gonna take? Everyone's like, uh, uh, uh I don't, we don't know how. How are we gonna? Uh, we got the. Uh, you know, it was kind of it was kind of like an aggressive timeline, which I think we pushed back anyway. But I mean, maybe later that day or the week after, you were like, okay, I need to hear what what's going on. And we talked, and <clears throat> you got fired up about something from what I had said and I was like oh I'm f more fired up now <laughs> like I really got pumped because like Satya I get, when Satya got the point I was like okay well then there's something here like I'm not just making something up you know and and that's when I got to work really like writing stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I think I needed a little bit of that creative space too because at the at the first moment where you were like okay I, I want to launch this soon I think that it, you wanted to launch it like in the next training cycle, which was like two weeks away from like the day yeah. you said you wanted to launch it, which, you know, sounds crazy. But in the past, we literally used to do things like that. Sure. Like, we would yeah. just be like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then in two weeks, it was like out. Right. People were buying it. But uh, we have a bigger team now and we have more pieces in play and both of us have more responsibilities. And so it's just harder to turn things around that quickly but I think that I had it on my radar that this was coming and I could feel the momentum but then it was really needing a minute to myself to just manage the flow of everything that we do day to day and right. make some space for how we're going to implement it and how we're going to market it and all the pieces that go with you having the creative space to actually write the program yeah so okay so that gets us to like me starting to write the program which I'm not going to spend too much time talking about um i can give some more details but it's at that point that you start to like think okay well a program that has no message and no you know marketing and no words to it like that that doesn't that doesn't magically sell so like where, where do you where do you start with that yeah well i have a whole framework that i use which helps inform everything that we do around the messaging of a product. So for me, it always starts with what problem are we solving for the customer, for the client, for the athlete, and also just painting a real picture in my mind of 
what the hope is, what the dream is, what the struggle is, what the obstacles, the uncertainties. And once those are crystallized, then I understand how it fits with our other product lineup, how it fits with um, just the fitness landscape at large, and how to message it based around those factors. What were some of the highlights of this one that like stood out to you or that anchored your process? Well, the thing that stood out to me was that, and it's interesting because you might look at a program like Pump 40 and say, okay, this is about people who want to lift. But the deeper message is really that people are emotionally feeling frazzled. They're feeling conflicted. They're feeling like they're pulled in all kinds of different directions because this thing that they have made part of their lives is now taking second fiddle to all of the other obligations that have now piled up for them. And so it's not about lifting at all. It's about that connection to your training and how to make sure to know that you're overcoming the uncertainty of like, is my time that I spend in the gym even worth it? Like, am I just spending like an hour and a half and like telling my kids I can't hang out with them right now and then it's not even really doing me any favors, you know? So those, the meeting of all those things where it's like, I wanna make sure my time in the gym is valuable. I wanna make sure I'm getting the most effective training I can and it's gotta be engaging and it's gotta be fun and it's gotta feel worth my time. Mm. And then, you know, the lifting is like how that gets done. It's the how, but not necessarily the why. Yeah, I'm thinking about like the hordes of people out there that are going through a similar life change that I've been through in the last five, six years where it's like, you know, maybe, I mean, we've always really resonated with an audience of people that are like fitness people. Like they're, they, they make, you know, Hey, if you're listening right now, you're a fitness person. Right. <laughs> Let me inform you. You identify <laughs> news as flash. Fit- newsflash. <laughs> you're a fitness person. Uh, you think about it when, you know, it, throughout your day, you think about it the day before, like you reflect on your workouts. You could probably tell me all the reps and sets that you did and the weights that you selected ye- yesterday or on Monday in your workout. Like, you know, it's, it's part of you. And you know, if you have a lot of time in your day, you're like, I'm going to work out a lot. You know, like those are, that's, what what you're you want to put your energy towards and then as life progresses and you know you hit different points of okay i want to i want to settle down in quotes like i want to have some kids i want to you know i'm 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 also passionate about my career i want to like you know get promoted grow in my in, in my 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 career it's like okay it's, now you have more responsibilities and the the hours maybe for movement and and playtime in the gym get cons- constrained and then you're like well how do i ch-? and i don't want to change my identity I, i'm i'm still an exercise person and like i can't check the box like i used to how do i check the box and yeah it's very it's a very conflicting time you know and i mean it 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 does not just switch off um, you know, I mean, training, going from training three hours a day to like training for 45 minutes, like that took time, time, mm-hmm. time. And I don't train 45 minutes every day now. Like there's days I go a little longer. I'll go for a 90 minute bike ride. Like I still try and get out and go for walks and maybe do a little cardio hit here and there. But, um, you know, it's, it's not like a overnight shift. So this, like you said, this is just a con- conflict that a lot of people are facing. And every program that we create really connects the dots between what you're experiencing in your personal life and in your training and what you're excited about and engaged in and the parallels between that and what people's everyday experience is. Because we don't have a lot of people in our audience that trained for the CrossFit Games four hours a day and now are in that struggle. But there are a lot of similarities of people having very similar types of conflicts, even if they're not as significant you know training wise the difference in time and all of that as as your own yeah got it okay so where does this take us to now we're like i got to get the program finished it's like hey you know if we're gonna launch this thing in like 10 days like Mm -hmm. where's the program um yeah so then i I, you know basically spend every every six weeks we we put out training for a new cycle of persist the whole training cycle of persist always is done before training starts because it has to be tested by testing a testing group. So 
I have that, you know, responsibility to write three training tracks, uh, you know, four training tracks every six weeks, make sure they're ready to go. Um, so that takes weeks, you know, it's, that doesn't happen like in one week, it takes one week of planning, one week of outlining another week of writing and then a fourth week of you know expanding and then a fifth week of checking and then it's ready you know it's like and that's got to be done ahead of time so in order to make room to write pump 40 like i had to condense four weeks of work into two weeks so i had to work really hard on you know delivering that and then got time to basically put pump 40 together which took about the actual putting the program together about two and a half weeks and because I was just focused on the one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once that was done, you know, we're not talking about it a lot because I think it's for another episode, but Aerobic 40 had to be written as well. And so I'm writing that alongside of Pump 40 and, you know, getting, you know, doing basically testing of both um, and exploring what both will feel like and look like for, you know, myself, for the audience, for different people that are testing it for us. Um, and then once those things are done, then it's like, okay, Satya, these programs are ready. They've been tested. They've been edited. Now we got to get them into an ebook. And so mm-hmm. what's that look like? Yeah. I mean, we've done it a lot of ways in the past, but, and Nate's been a part of that too. Mm-hmm. How, how, how does that process happen? There's so much that happens on the implementation side because there's an ebook that has to be created actually too, in this case, but then there are all these different components that have to come together. There's cover design, there's making sure that all of the demo videos within the program are filmed and added to our YouTube channel, which Nate does, and then we link them from the PDF so people can have a demo for their movement. And then there's putting all of the components together for the marketing and the actual implementation like uploading the product to the store and creating a product and creating a sales page and linking it from all the other pages and adding it to the menu and like all those little tiny pieces that all come together. Right. And the marketing is a huge effort. Totally. Yeah. And then there's, there's the social media content that we have to film to like let people know there is this thing that's Mm -hmm. out there and what is it even about? Why would you be doing it? And some of that's very like organic, like me just posting stories of what I did in training that day, uh, you know, which we could go back closer to the beginning of our conversation it's like well how do you even know you're like onto something it's like well i how many how many weeks ago we we released a you know we had a, a, a an email that went out that was alluded to a pump 40 and the response mm-hmm. was people were like yes yeah the the response was abnormally high mm-hmm. you know and same thing went for story posts that i put up of like hey i did this pump 40 workout and they're like you know, audience members are asking questions like, what is that? That sounds super intriguing that I really am interested in what that could look like. Mm -hmm. And when's that coming? And is this going to be a this? And, you know, so you could just sort of see like even Molly who responds to a lot of our customers or most of our customer support emails, she's coming to us in Slack and say, Hey, there's a lot of people asking questions about this pump 40. Like, when's it coming? I'm like, Mm -hmm. well, wow, we don't know yet. Like we're not even, we're not doing it. We gotta make it. We gotta make this thing. (laughs) So, um, yeah, along the way, there's an attempt to get customer feedback, you know, yeah. or at least share things. And this is what happens with the email list. So if you're not subscribed to the email list, get over to the email list, functional-bodybuilding.com forward slash free. And that'll get you a lot of resources and on our email list. But back to the question or the topic, which is, you know, we're putting out content on this email uh, weekly that is just interesting and intriguing to us and you know we're like oh this seems like it's a thing let's just share it about it and then boom you know we get hit with a big wave of questions and inquiries it's like okay there's something here yeah which is what we'll talk about on the next episode is we had an mm-hmm. email like that this week that got a huge response but we'll save that for the next show um so yeah all of these things are happening along the way and then it's like okay emails have to go out social media posts, you know, promo videos, filming those, getting demos up on there, creative for the uh, ebook, piecing the ebook together, editing the ebook, making sure it's not, you know, it's not like pump 47, like that would be a big typo error. (laughs) Five day eight. (laughs) Yeah. And um, yeah, and then, and then there's like 
down to the wire. Like what's what you know? Yeah. What's happening the night before? And <laughs> Satya put in about uh, she had a thirty-seven hour day yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a special kind of hour. Yeah. Yes. And it was my meeting day, so I had lots of meetings as well. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, talk me through just maybe some of those final hours, and then when you hit, like, the, the scary button of, like, okay, it's live. <laughs> and that, that's when I send my traditional text to yes. you. <laughs> yeah, I just get the text that says, ah, and I'm like, it's time? Is it time? Is that what's going on? <laughs> the soft launch of this got you a little worked up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had about two weeks to basically make the ebooks, do all the marketing, put it all together, make it live. So uh, it, it really did come down to the wire. And I was closer to the wire than I've ever been yesterday. So yesterday was insanely packed. But um, yeah, it was really just putting all the, the final pieces together. So I think earlier in the week, the ebooks were finished. I sent them to you just to look over and make sure there weren't any corrections that needed to happen got them uploaded to the site, got the products drafted so they'd just be ready to flip a switch and, and be live. And then um, the the marketing was pretty much in place where we had a series of emails ready to go out to our list, the last of which uh, is waiting until our website is <laughs> a little bit holding, speedier. Still holding, still holding on that email. <laughs> because it's all live and ready. It's just I don't want people to hit get hit with a slow website when they go and try to buy it. Um but yeah, it, it was just really the hard part is making everything come together for all of the language, uh, like for the, the sales page, because I take that extremely seriously <laughs> as yeah. a marketer. So it's got to look good. It's got to be compelling. And it's got to speak really to the story of why this product matters rather than just being like, here's a ebook and here's a buy button. Go click it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, any last thoughts before we uh, close close this conversation? I think that the main message that I would like to get across to everyone who's listening to this is that we always create products that are centered around the needs and desires of real people. And I think that that is key if you are creating your own product or if you are potentially participating in one of ours where you know that it's there for a reason, it's got a purpose, and it's not just stuff that we make up because we think it sounds cool and yeah. we never like check that against our audience. And so I think that that's really our guiding light for even the free content that we put out is we're just trying to put out training that we think is really valuable and really helpful and yeah. help it connect to people's real lives. That's a great point. And I'll, I'll end with this, that uh, one of our very own Coach Shauna, she hit day one and day two of Pump 40 earlier this week. And her legs, she said, are feeling spicy. Mm -hmm. That first squat Nordic hamstring superset, that will definitely leave a mark. So get in there, grab it, and go feel your legs like you've never felt them before. And her fitness is no joke, so you know that's serious. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Cool. Well, that was fun. Uh, hope you all got some from this. Um, hey, if you're listening to this podcast on any one of the platforms where you can go down to the bottom specifically and leave a comment or give us a five-star review, we would love that. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, that would be a great place to do it. Definitely could help us spread the message of this podcast and get it into more homes and more cars and more AirPods around <laughs> the world. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.